Hey YouTube, how you doing? Kevin here doing some preparation work. I uh, did the preparation work. I wasn't able to do a video on it. I mean, the sparks flying everywhere. I mean, it was awful. Um, so anyway, this is the pipe I got in the mail um, today. This is the $85 pipe. And this is for the, um, the Honda there. So I cut it all up so I could use it. Did all the preparation work, all the body work to it. And you can see how it's nice and hollow in it. This is the expansion chamber. This is going to be going on the uh, KE-102 build. Um, this is going to be flat black. It's, it's going to look, uh, it's going to look really, I might even go gloss, but I don't know. I don't know. But I still got some welding and stuff to do when I put the new pipe on. And um, I cut up an old pipe, so I showed you guys that stuff. And I wanted to show you guys a couple of the tools that I used to cut the steel and be very careful because you don't want to put a hole in this. Um, this is a, you know, you need the pressure that's in there. And that, that really matters. So a couple things I did is I used the uh, Sawzall here. I still saw to lob off some of the, um, the heavy stuff like that right there. That's the main engine pipe for the Honda there. Put that right here so it just gets down and drop it. And I, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, I lobbed off the bracket tree. All that type of stuff. The back part of the pipe that, that I cut. That, this way here goes up to the uh, muffler. To the silencer, I guess you'd call it. And the bracket that holds that on. So I cut all that off. Um... So I got that done, and what I used to cut them is simple. You used a uh, cutting wheel. You can see how much left I have on that. Now, mind you, I cut through a whole exhaust system today on the Kawasaki KE100. So the, I, I really got my monies out of that uh, that disc. It's supposed to be four and a half inches. Anyway, this is one of my uh, snap-on cutters. Works great. And then I used my Ingersoll Rand. Um, this is one of those, you can pop the discs off of it. Fairly easy. You just um, grab it and twist. I can't do it with one hand, but um, anyway, you, it, it pops off, and you, you, they have different fittings. They got one uh, different ends on them. I have one for cleaning up gasket surface. This is a sanding disc, and um, it literally, when you have the the welds, that right there will grind them right down the flat. You can flatten them with that. See right there, you can just grind them flat. So some of the stuff was pretty deep. You know, you go leave that stuff in there. Some of the stuff was like that when I got it. But, um, what do you cost where the bracket was? So it's a little heat fatigue, but nothing, uh, no sponginess, nothing like that. So it's good. And, um, uh, it's still very thick and solid. So you can see right inside there. The expansion chamber, no baffles. Um, you're not going to see any of that when I'm done. When this is all done, that's not, you're not going to see any of that. It's going to look like, you know, it's going to be just black. I might even do gloss. I don't know. Probably going to do gloss. I do gloss and everything on the motor, so... I'll probably do this as a gloss black. Um, what do you call it here? So that right there is pretty much the side you'll see. It'll be like that because I don't want to show the seam. There's a seam on there. I was cleaning up the seam. The seam on this thing was shitty. So clean that up. You know, it's basically rolled steel. You know, they made the cone. They cut it, welded it, and boom. So I just figured I'd do a quick video and show you. This is going to be for the KE-102 um, bike build. And... Um, which is pretty neat because I mean this thing is lightweight. I mean I can I could hock this thing out of football. Uh, it's almost in the same shape, and it's pretty cool because it's going to give me a lot extra room on the bike for cool stuff. So I don't know. I'm kind of debating on what I might do. I have a couple of ideas, but I don't know what I'm gonna how I'm gonna do it yet. So anyway, um, I got a mess up here. Here's a, a KE-102 mock-up bike. But you can see how it's going to fit. Right up and in there. It'll be a heat shield. It'll be down low like that. But you can see how it'll contour, you know what I mean? And I'm not too far from the pipe right there. So it looks like it's going to be a pretty simple um, mod. Pretty much. So, anyway, I figured I'd show you guys that real quick and see what you guys thought of it. And um, I got some more of that pipe. I'll do some butt, um, buttoning up on the pipe. Bring it up to that. That'll be right up in that area right there, nice and low and right to basically to the point. And then there'll be that thin tube. Thin tube right here. It'll go on the back side of the, the spring. And then the muffler, the muffler will be hanging out right about here someplace. I got recycle over here, guys. Sorry about that. But you muffle right up in this area. So, anyway, that's where that's going to go. 
and how I'm going to do it. And I don't know what I'm going to do for a um, bracket. I don't know. I've got a couple of ideas. I was thinking about um, just loving off the back part of this thing. Just so it covers it. I don't know. The possibilities are absolutely endless of what I could do with this thing. So I'm still in the process of figuring it all out and how I want to do it. So, but I figured I'd just do a quick video and show you guys the pipe is taking shape. Got a lot of real estate for expansion in there. So I'm hoping to get my power that I'm, I'm desiring out of it, which would be really, really nice. You can see right through that thing, right? Right there, boom. So, anyway, well, this is my short video on the preparation. I think I'd just show you what I did. I lobbed it. I, I basically just hacked it off and then cleaned it up. It was nothing spectacular. I deburred all the edges with the end of a um, file, which when I start to build this um, muffler, I'm going to show you more on it. But for right now, I just wanted to show you how easy it was. The tool, tool the three tools I used to um, cut this thing up hack it up was simple I took all the big stuff off with the sawzall right there I did not use the hammer or the uh, pry bar those right there were on this cardboard from another project I was working on so I just basically used the um, hacksaw to lob that off I did put this on the cardboard that's why it's over here and then um, it was real easy I used the cutting disc and I just basically went right on the welds back and forth and then to the point where I could just I could break them off, and then I use the, um, the this disc right here to um, what do you call it there? Clean up all the surfaces and make sure they're all you know flat and, and smooth for the most part. And that's pretty much it. So now I got my expansion chamber. I'm excited. Um, I can't wait to put this on. This bike is going to breathe. If I put this on right now without doing any jetting on the carburetor, it's going to run like absolute ass. And that's because of the restriction I showed you guys in the, the previous video. So whatever you do, whenever you make a major change, whether it be um, boring it out, a high compression cylinder head, um, I didn't have to jet on that, but on in some cases you would have to. Um, I did not have to re-jet. Mine was fine with that because it was the same one that was in the bike. They had the compression, the high compression head on it. But anyway. I, I did have to change my octane of fuel though. I had to go to a high octane fuel. An exhaust system. The other one I showed you had all the baffles in it and all the restriction to it. That would need to be rejetted. So when you're going from that to this, um, most likely bigger jets <laughs> to get more fuel into it because the thing is going to be like, whoa, I can breathe. We're going for, uh, I was going for 15 horsepower, but after seeing the restriction, that I'm gonna get in the um, what do you call it there? In the in the exhaust, and the size of this chamber right here is basically the same size chamber, believe it or not, from the tip to the baffle that's on the other one. So I'm gonna have the same size chamber. However, it's gonna be without restriction. That's where my power is gonna be coming from. Although it looks smaller than the one that was on there, like I said, if you measure from where the pipe is to where the baffle is in that old pipe, it's just about the same. And then you gotta take in consideration there's a big giant dent in it right about here, and I don't have that big giant dent. And that when you put a dent in something, it takes up space. So if you're trying to figure out the uh, cubic feet, that's you know, or cubic centimeters in this case, of what the space you have, um, this little pipe is the same as it's on the pipe. It's on the on the bike now for size wise, just that this doesn't have all the restrictions that the um, the pipe has, and this has a different shape to it, and the shape makes all the difference. Whenever you're working on these bikes, shapes make a difference. They come in different forms, different shapes. Um, Suzuki uses theirs. Um, Yamaha uses theirs um, Kawasaki uses theirs however I don't know if you can see it or not but there's a, another expansion pipe right here on this bike that's right there is the expansion pipe and it's pretty uh, it's got about the same real estate as the other one and it goes into the skinny pipe 
like this, skinny pipe, and out the back, which is the same size pipe we're going to be using, coincidentally. Um, this is a, what do you call it there, a Suzuki, um, what do you call it there, DS80. So, we got some, we got some places we can go with that, and you can see the silencer, the little silencer on the back. See how it's mounted on, that's what I was thinking about going with something like that. Um, doesn't have to be anything extravagant. It just has to work nice. So I'm thinking I might go with a system like that um, for a pipe or a performance pipe. It really don't matter performance or not. Um, this bike still ain't going to have the output to warrant that. But it's going to look good. No, you can't go. You cannot. You cannot go on that bike. It's on the trailer. So anyway, um, that's it for that. And um, hopefully that all helps you guys out and sets you in a direction to go. And uh, and you go over there, please. No, I said no. Uh, hopefully that gives you guys some idea what's what's involved with doing these type of things. This is a this is a heavy mod, and a lot of people think it's very hard to do, and it's actually very easy to do. I got a lot of comments on it. Good luck getting that to fit. Yeah, it's gonna fit. And it's gonna fit perfectly fine, and it's gonna do exactly what I need it to do. I know it looks smaller. But believe it or not, it's not. You got to measure out your cubic feet, your cubic centimeters, your, you know, your, your basically your volume. Okay, the volume that this right here will hold is the same volume as the other one would hold. But my power is going to be coming from, there's no baffles. There's no restrictions in this. It's a free flowing, it's basically going to, the exhaust is going to be able to get in here quick and get, you know, and get out and do its thing. Um and be able to expand in a comfortable chamber so the engine pipe is correct which is good i got enough for the output pipe i'm good i think this is going to work out absolutely pissa so i can't wait to see how this is going to go on and um i have all kinds of ideas for it so um i can't wait to show you guys as i go i might be using some parts from another type of bike but um i'm going to include all those and once i do once I do the, um, what do you call it there, the videos on it, I'll be able to show you more as I do the fabrication. So, well that's it for me guys. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, by all means, I love them. Keep them coming. Thanks.